global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Global Happiness Today YouTube channel. Many thanks for keeping free with us. There have been tussle here and there over the issue of the U.S. court case. And of course, there's been this information trending. How um, the lawyers of uh, Bola Metunibu is actually hoping for a delay in the release, uh, judging the fact that information springing out may not be too palatable. But while that is going on, uh, Peter Obi and Atuka Babaka are literally telling Supreme Court that Abuja can't be a 37 state. State, and they got their reasons. We're going to go through that very quickly, but before we do that, kindly subscribe to our channel by clicking on the right subscribe button beside it. You said bell notification icon. Please go ahead, click on it to get notified as soon as we update our channel on YouTube. Now, determined to nullify uh, the election of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu, uh, candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Alajatiko Obubaka, and his counterpart in the Labour Party, LP, Mr. Peter Obi, as at yesterday, launched separate appeals before the Supreme Court. The two candidates in the appeals prayed the apex court to set aside the judgment of the Presidential Election Petition Court, PEPC, which affirmed Tinubu of the ruling of Progressive Congress, APC, as the winner of the February 25th Presidential Election. Now, specifically, they argue that the lower court erred in its judgment because Tinubu did not get at least 25% of the vote cast in the FCT, Abuja adding that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, deliberately refused to transmit the result of the polls electronically to its portal in accordance with its guidelines. They also argue that the PEPC glossed over their claims of manipulation of the poll conducted in breach of the Constitution and Electoral Act in spite of the witty evidence. Now, whereas articles, article through his cons consortium of 67 lawyers that comprised of 18 senior advocates of Nigeria, led by Chief Chris Uche, a senior advocate of Nigeria, signed 535 grounds of appeal to challenge Tinubu's victory, will be through his own team of lawyers, led by Dr. Liva Ozoko, senior advocate of Nigeria, signed 551 grounds of appeal before the Apex Court. That specific article in his appeal maintained that the verdict of the Justice Haruna Tsunami led five member panel of the Court of Appeal, which had on September 6 dismissed his petition against the outcome of the presidential election, was not only against the weight of the evidence, but accompanied by a grave miscarriage of justice against him. And the former vice president insisted that the PEPC panel erred in law when it failed to nullify the presidential election on the grounds of non-compliance with the Electoral Act 2022. Even when evidence that was adduced before it showed that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, acted in breach of extant laws and regulation guiding the conduct of elections, he accused the PEPC of reaching its unanimous decision based on gross misconstruction and misrepresentation of provisions of both the 1999 Constitution as amended and the Electoral Act 2022. His words, and I quote, the lower court erred in law when it refused to uphold the mandatoriness of the electronic transmission of results for confirmation and verification of final results introduced by the Electoral Act 2022 for transparency and integrity of results in accordance with the principles of the Act. Now, he also argued that section 64 subsection 4 and 5 of the electoral act as well as INEC regulations and guidelines for conduct of the election which he tendered in evidence made mandatory the use of bimodal voter secretation system BVAS machines for the electronic transmission of results of the election directly from the polling unit to INEC coalition system for verification, confirmation and coalition of results before, before announcement. Now article 2 the EPS called that some of the presiding officers who personally handled the beavers machine at polling unit on the election they had in their testimony before the PEPC confirmed the non-transmission of results of the presidential election electronically from the beavers machine whereas results of the National Assembly election that held simultaneously were electronically transmission, transmitted without difficulty. Uh, okay, now, the bypass of the use of the prescriber verification technology was nationwide affecting the entire polling unit and collection of results all over Nigeria and substantially affecting the outcome of the election article added. More so, he also told the court that INEC sole witness Lawrence Bayodi 
admitted that the commission experienced a technical glitch that made the system to fail to work on the day of the election, which technical glitch was not explained by the first respondent. Now, besides the argue that the virtue of Section 169, Subsection 1 of the Constitution and Section 148 of the Electoral Act, INEC regulation and guidelines had the force of law being a direct product of the constitution itself does qualify as a subsidiary legislation. Now, Article told the Europe's court that the non-compliance with the Electoral Act was nationwide, cutting across 176,846 polling units in the country, a, a situation he said substantially affected the outcome of the election. He said quite a lot. And let's quickly run down, run through what Obi is saying. Now, in his own appeal case, Obi said that um, he came third in the presidential poll, uh, maintained that the PEPC panel erred in law and thereby reached a wrong conclusion when he dismissed his petition. He alleged that the panel wrongly evaluated the proof of evidence he added or he adduced before it and accautioned a grave miscarriage of justice when it held that he did not specify polling units where irregularities occurred during the election. Now, Obi and the Labour Party for the, faulted the PEPC for dismissing their case on the premise that they did not specify the figures of vote or scores that were allegedly suppressed or inflated in favour of President Tinubu and the APC. Now, the the, the equally accused the justice tsunami-led panel of erring in law when it relied on, on paragraphs one, paragraph 4, Sub 1, D, 2, and 54 of the first schedule to the Electoral Act 2022 to strike out paragraphs of the petition. While accusing the lower court of breaching his right to a fair hearing, Obi insisted that evidence of his witnesses was wrongly dismissed on as incompetent. He told the Apex Court that the panel unjustly dismissed his allegation that INEC uploaded 18,088 blood results on its IRF portal. Muscle so, Obi alleged that the lower court ignored his allegation that certified true copies of documents that INEC issued his legal team comprised of 8,123 blood results that contained blank A4 papers, pictures and images of unknown persons purported purporting the same to be CTC that certified true copies of polling unit results of the presidential election. And the learned justices of the court below below erred in law and occasioned a miscarriage of justice when they held and concluded that he failed to establish the allegation of corrupt practices and overvoting will be added. Now, he also said that it was wrong for the lower court to rely on the legal principle of estoppel to dismiss his his contention that INEC bypassed its own regulations when it refused to electronically transmit results of the ele election from polling unit to the RF. Now, the petitioners adduced credible and substantial evidence, both oral and documentary, that proved substantial non compliance with the Electoral Act 2022, but responded in the conduct of the election. The court below overlooked that the respondent failed to disprove the evidence of substantial non compliance adduced by the Petitioners, the applicant stated, adding that the panel wrongfully dismissed the issue of double nomination that was raised against Tinubu's vice president, Kashim Shetima. Tinubu was indicted and fined 460,000 US dollars in drug related case. Likewise, Obi insisted that the PEPC overlooked evidence that established that President Tinubu was previously indicted and fined a sum of 460,000 US dollars in the United States over his involvement in a, in a drug related case. Imposition of a fine is not limited to a criminal conviction as the word in law includes a civil forfeiture. Obi Future. Obi further argued in his appeal. And the Labour Party yesterday, in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary, Obiero, for said its decision to challenge Tinubu's election at the Apex Court was based on the conviction that the lower court erred in fact and in law by arriving in at the conclusions contained in the judgment. Now, he first said the 51 grounds are considered an error in law as the party's legal team intends to prove that APC presidential candidate in the election. Bola Tinebu did not win the election and that it was wrong for both INEC and the PEPC to declare him winner of the election when many incontrovertible points were proven otherwise. Obi and the Labour Party are seeking from, from the APS court four key points. One, allow the appeal allowed the appeal set aside the per perverse judgment of the PEPC and grant the relief sought in the petition either in the main or in the alternative. 
on the issue of the 25% requirement for Abuja, Obi and the Labour Party listed the particulars of error by the PEPC as follows, that the PEPC failed to appreciate that for the president to assume the position or office or position of the president, he is also under a mandate to secure 25% of the vote cast in the FCT. They also accuse the PEPC of overlooking the fuller purport of section 299, which will be more glaring on the claim examination, on a calm examination of section 301 of the constitution and so on and so forth. Quite a strong one, I must say, and it looks like they are already uh, having their proofs ready. 51 is not beans for Labour Party. 39 is not more more for PDP and the uh, article. And of course, uh, Peter will be already set to get back the mandate. The question is, will they get it? As Nigerians are looking forward to the Lego fireworks to begin. Let's put it in our conversation.